Chris Baroots is back with a new episode. Uh, I've been on a little break, I guess. Uh, I mean, I it basically just travel and uh, just getting too full of uh, other stuff to do. Uh, but also maybe, I mean, there's been a lot of great big time releases over the last few weeks. I mean, even let's say Lainey Wilson and Miranda Lambert uh, released albums. And I've got to catch up with those still. Uh, you know, I, I guess I got to turn to listening a bunch for a while. Uh, so anyway, I haven't, I didn't hear a bunch of great indie stuff for a while. But I'll tell you what, for weeks now, I've been meaning to talk about, I, I got two things today, but uh, this one I've been wanting to get to for a long time and listening to, I mean, for a, few, a couple weeks and listening to it over and over again. Embla and the Carey Daughters, Off Leash. And the other thing we're going to do is an EP, just a four-song EP, by a fascinating artist named Jack Barksdale. Um, now, uh, Embla and the Carey Daughters, I think the singer-songwriter's name here is Embla Carey Daughter. And uh, it's a Norwegian Americana band country group um and i mean that's i guess if you listen to a lot of americana or focus on the new releases in this genre you'll see it's definitely international i mean the first crisper roots had a french artist and australian artist but uh the norwegians are in town she was a drummer in a band that's described somewhere as an indie legend, Razika, was that what it's called? Um, but you know, I, I, I've missed a lot of indie legends. But I'll tell you what, and this is Embla and the Carrie Daughters' second album, Off Leash. It features Embla on the cover riding a dog, like with a cowboy hat, riding a giant dog. Wee haw. Weirdly surreal and disturbing. I'd say like, okay, so both what, what these albums have in common, I think, or these artists have in common at this point, is very written, excellent, and unusual, surprising writer turns. Like f rich, fascinating lyrics, which is pretty interesting if English is not Embla Carey Daughter's first language. All right, but anyway, the writing is great. Um, so, Embla and the Carrie Daughters, this is their second album as a country act, and it's much better than the, than the previous one. Um, and man, I've been just listening to it over and over again, really enjoying it. Some of the songs really round, you know, this is one of my tests, I guess. Like, did any of the songs on that album that I just sampled you know, or just listen through. Stick. Like, I thought that was good. I enjoyed that. Do I find myself, after maybe listening to it twice, do I find myself humming it, thinking about it, you know, running through it in my head and then coming back to turn on one song, maybe, again? Uh, and I definitely do with, uh, actually with two of the songs on... Off Leash by Embla and the Carey Daughters. This one is really, this is my favorite song right now, I guess. Maybe The Message, too, which I don't know if it's quite inspiring, but, um, all right, this is Click Your Heels. <laughs>
good playing, full scale country production. It sounds great. And she really sounds great as a singer, I say. But it's the lyrics I'm interested in in a way. Like, okay, just click your heels together three times and say, I don't like it here. Take me away. Now, you know, ain't it sweet just knowing that if you don't stay, you're on your way. Okay, that's a nice little, like, uh, spin of tautologies and stuff. And uh, quite a compelling message. I don't know. Uh, and quite a compelling melody. Very rootsy. And it just stuck in my head. You know, and so, like, I've, in various, like, situations, right, I've just been through, like, a bunch of, like, stuff with in-laws and family and stuff like this, like, you know, well, I mean, worst comes to worst, you know, I'll just click my heels together three times and say, I don't like it here, take me away. I mean, I can leave any time I want, I guess, in any situation, almost any situation, or until I can't. But often one can. So that's nice. And, she, you know, she, I mean, they run a bunch of sort of uh, inspiring and yet amusing. Uh, I, I, and there's darker visions here too. But, um, okay, so here's one. This is should be a real feminist anthem. I've heard this about women. Men talking about women and talking to women like this. And I've heard about women, what it's uh, from women about what it's like to be addressed in this way. Let's t let's do uh, "Resting Bitch Face" by Embla and the Carry Daughters. I guess they, they, you know, like X's daughter is how you formulate a nor traditional Norwegian name. You know, I haven't like checked this out or whatever, but I, I grew up with a Norwegian girl uh, who's, you know, was a uh, fell daughter, fell daughter, the daughter of fell, I think. Boy, if I fucked that up, I'm sorry. Well, check out the lyric on this one and also the quality of the singing. Um, I'm really having fun. This is just how my face looks relaxed. All right. Uh, maybe these are, I mean, these are some pretty fresh things to write about, I guess, you know? I don't know if people say this. I mean, I think, I hope some guys are getting pretty sensitive enough not to go like, a pretty girl like you should smile. All right. Um, and I'll say, like, she gravitates toward a fairly traditional sound too, and the band, uh, which is really good, does as well. Uh, and I guess, I mean, much more so than on their first album, I suppose. Uh, a pretty rich country context, and she can do that with the lyric as well, although also with a fresh sense in a more traditional vein too. Uh, so this is a song called uh, I'll Never Love You Like I Should. 
it's got some devastating lines in it. I guess that's what I'm impressed by. And plus an excellent country arrangement and everything. That's good writing. <laughs> I would leave myself if I could. I haven't heard that as a line, but I think it's a line, right? Like it should be everywhere. I, I, you know, I don't blame you if you want to leave. I'd leave myself if I could. All right, that's a pretty devastating song of, sort of with an alcoholic theme, I suppose. Of course, that's traditional country. Embla and the Carrie Daughters riding your wee haw riding your dog. All right. Let's uh, shift to Jack Barksdale. I guess I have a harp on this rack. All right. Jack Barksdale. Described as a Texas singer-songwriter. Seems very young. Um, but it's got a bunch of stuff out there too. Really beautiful album, uh, from a few years ago, uh, or just a couple years ago called, um, Death of a Hummingbird. And let me, uh, I guess maybe let's play a cut or two. Um, well, uh, th there's different things I want to show. Maybe I'll try two songs on here even from Death of a Hummingbird. Um, how about the title cut? This is 2022. Well, I mean, I, I should, I would like to let that play, I guess, but uh, it's really a beautiful performance and really a beautiful song. And the guitar is Jack, uh, and you know, the and the vocals and the writing. This is a really unique artist, and and the new EP has a much different flavor, actually, four song EP. Okay, so now, uh, I mean, I guess if you're my age, maybe 
you're a little stunned by the gendering, right? Or a little taken, double take, okay? That's Jack doing that singing, right? And he, him pronouns on the website and all this, okay? Um, so the gendering might be complex. And it might, you know, like it might uh, make a baby boomer go, huh, what? You can't be Jack, all right? But I think a Gen Z person would just go like, huh, yeah, yeah, completely, man. You know, like, in other words, like, it's, but but that adds richness to this, too. Okay, it's not like, I don't know, man, like, uh, it adds a compelling quality to the whole thing, I think. Like, if you're thinking, the, well, I don't know if that's, that's right, you're, you're trying to place the gender in a way. Now, one thing about uh, Jack Barksdale is he's a great player man a great instrumentalist and so rootsy man like with slide and everything and we didn't really see the rootsy side on that beautiful like folk song but you know like this is also from death of a hummingbird just to, i'm going to give you a little snatch to give you a little more of the guitar it has a instrumental album out actually uh that is extremely worthwhile all right um this is before the devil knows by jack barksdale from death of a hummingbird 2022 in the blues mode. Dark was the night, cold was the ground. Dressed for Sunday on a Saturday night. Flying with the singing gospel blues. Down on the corner for the nickels and dimes. shit is great dude and that death of a hummingbird album is wonderful and i'm gonna you know i just listen to it in the car and i'll be listening to it a lot i think um all right but what we got out now is um uh that's a tribute to blind willie johnson all right uh and golly it's a completely appropriate tribute to blind willie johnson man um now, what we got going now, though, is a little funkier, too, uh, and, and in some ways a more, I was going to say more assured, but hey, you don't get no more assured than that, actually, really, man. Like, that's, and I am i don't know how old Jack Barksdale is, but it's got a certain masterfulness, especially as the guitar emerges. He plays a bunch of different instruments, including excellent harmonica here and there. Um... Well, let's, how about a little anarchist country? Now, there's an underpopulated sh- subgenre. Uh, who's that? Uh, Sonny War. Sonny War, who does Americana, an anarchist Americana. All right, well, maybe Jack Barksdale does this too. I, I don't want to like attribute anarchism to him as a uh, political philosophy, but how about law and order? This is out of order. And so this is the song that gives the uh, theme. Um, okay, so like I say, it's a four-song EP. Uh, Law and Order maybe is the centerpiece. Uh, but I mean, four f- excellent, fascinating songs. Aggressive and political songs, I think. But with a tinge, like a, a little uh, emblem in the Carrie Daughters, of, of a little surrealism, too. And really freaky cool moments in the lyrics. As well as immensely cool moments in the instrumentation and I find the vocals very compelling as well. Law and Order. Law and Order You know the kind Trying to save ourselves From our own minds 
It's no use trying It's one crazy mess That red tape's choking our own government All these rules and regulations They all break down Cause those who make them and break them They're the same old clowns It'll never be clean It'll never be pretty There's hate and violence all over the city We are not holy, we are not pure, we're nothing special, nothing more. It's incomprehensible, sad but true. But what are we average everyday folks to do? I don't think a revolution will help our cause Let's just sit back and hope the apocalypse won't be too long So let us look forward to a brighter dawn When we got nothing to govern cause we ain't nothing at all Yeah, let us look forward to that brighter day When law and order is far away When law and order is far away. Trying to save ourselves from our own minds. That's a function of law. I've often thought that. You know, like... You're like, human nature is evil or something like this. And then your next move is, okay, so that's why we're putting some people in charge of others, you know. We're going to cure, we, the humans, are going to cure human nature by radically empowering some of us and disempowering others. Uh, and not seem promising as a cure for human nature. Thomas Hobbes. Now, could Jack Barksdale be, you know, reading Thomas Hobbes and shit like this? I have this funny feeling he could be, all right? Uh, all right. How about this just for the lyric and stuff? Insanity Defense Exhibit A by Out of Order. From Out of Order by Jack Barksdale. Insanity Defense Exhibit A. Been driving myself crazy searching for of time. I hate this world. It hates me back. I don't know what I'm gonna do. All these corny phrases and midnight crazes are splitting me in two. I'm laughing. Can't stop laughing at this world we're living in. Oh, it's happening. Finally happening. The roof is caving in. Okay, actually, even though it has this kind of light tone, like, ha ha, yeah, ha ha, I can't stop laughing. But, uh, man, that's pretty dark. The lyric, I hate to say it, really. Um, but, um, Adam and Eve were pretty peeved when they learned that love was a lie. Um, I've been reading holy books and science books at the same time. They go well together, like stormy weather, Rubik's Cubes, and moonshine. See, I'd say that's pretty good writing, right? Um, all right, so I've lost track of what number episode that is of CRISPR Roots, and I do apologize for a couple weeks off, and I intend to be regular. However, I've got more travel and shit coming up, uh, but I'll be 
listening. And I'll be trying to do another episode next week. Or even later this week. Peace out.